No, that's that's neat. And I would think that if they're making, you know, better money, I mean, is it uh, typically is it is it that they're coming to you for because the money's better or is it because the work is better? A combination of both. I'm just curious. Well, all of the above. What I've found in the Philippines typically is, you know, someone will work for, a, you know, you, I mean, you're, you're 20 years old, you get out of college. What does everyone do? You go get a job, right? You, you get a full-time job at some company, you know, and you're doing your thing. And, uh, you know, eventually you realize that there's other options. Oh, maybe I should find another job. Or then you start hearing, see, in the Philippines specifically, because they're so close to American culture and because there is such a uh, difference in you know, the uh, wage of a Philippine worker versus a U.S. worker. Um, the Philippines' biggest export is labor. Um, that's mm -hmm. their biggest industry, what they call huh. it. Yeah, BPO Interesting. industry, which is uh, outsourcing, business process outsourcing. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, they work for a couple of years for a company and then they have a friend, uh, you know, uh, an old college friend or something, or maybe one of their employee coworkers that they've known tells them they found an online job, this sort of thing. And that's usually how it starts. You know, usually they'll start posting resumes online, um, you know, getting random, they might just get gigs or, you know, one-off projects type things. Um, and, you know, you start searching more. And again, these are just opportunities that folks over there are looking for. And, you know, we typically uh, give them more uh, comfort or security in terms of longer term employment and ongoing employment uh, versus someone who's just like, hey, you know, uh, you know, design a graphic for me. It takes an hour and that's the end of it. You know, we're actually right. employing them. So, um, yeah, you know, they're making more money. They're working from home. Um, you know, I, I have found that at least with my team, you know, a lot of them are single mothers. Um, there may not be a father in the picture. Their children might be at home mm. and going to school. And uh, it just works. It works for them. And again, you know, it, it's not for everybody. A lot of people need to be in an office, want to be in an office uh, in terms of workers. But, uh, you know, I'm usually hiring independent people that uh, don't need someone standing behind them, watching them all day long. And again, at the end of the day, for us, it's, it's really about deliverables. You know, yep. are, you, are you delivering the client's expectations? Yeah, no, that's interesting. What, what, are, there any, are there any regulatory issues you have to deal with? I mean, red tape kind of stuff by doing this stuff internationally? I mean, what, is the, what are the U.S. regulations like? And what are the regulations like in the Philippines, for that matter, that are kind of challenging? Or maybe there isn't any. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ask you, I, you know, uh, not not really. Um, I mean, it really depends on what you're looking at. But uh, the way that a U.S. company will hire people is as contractors or as employees uh, in the U.S. Um, I'm no tax expert. I'm not even going to pretend to, to know. Uh, what I know is when we're selling the services to our clients, uh, they are not their employees. So you're hiring uh, my company to provide the services. So right. uh, we internally take care of all of those kinds of considerations. And quite frankly, it, be, it becomes an expense, um, you know, like any other expense for the company for the U.S. companies that are hiring through my company. So uh, in terms of the way that we do it, um, it's pretty, I guess you could say seamless or um, not a lot of issues in terms of the U.S. clients. If you're hiring there directly, you know, I would recommend looking at U.S. law and Philippine law, but, you know, I, I can't really advise on that. No, yeah, I got you. I was just always wondering if there's what kind of, I mean, there would be something that stood out to you if, the, you know, if, if there was a bunch of red tape. I mean, I haven't ever heard any, but, you know, I don't always know if there's stuff going on behind the scenes, guys I can take care of. Well, it, it's kind of like even... Yeah, it's kind of almost in the U.S., you know, uh, hiring contractors versus, you know, hiring full-time employees. Um, yep. Some people see there to be a lot of benefits from the business owner stands, standpoint of hiring, you know, contractors, uh, though if they are doing employee type work and there are certain parameters around that. But again, I'm no expert and I don't even want to, you know, pretend yep. So, so when we look at like the, I mean, the outsourcing as far as the, you know, type of, 
labor, I guess, that's typically been outsourced and recently being outsourced. I mean, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on the future? Is it like what what are what are some of the next areas that maybe are more of a jump that people will start outsourcing that traditionally maybe now they wouldn't even consider, but down the line they'll probably outsource, you know, these these functions uh, overseas. That's a really good question uh, because uh, a lot of people they come to us and they think, oh, you know, outsourcing is just call center work, right? Right. Uh, because yeah. again, most of us know that for the last 10 plus years. We've we, all experienced it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that's pretty much it. Yeah. And it leaves a bad taste in our mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but the reality is, if it can be done online or on the phone, it can be outsourced. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be outsourced outside of the United States. It doesn't even have to be outsourced outside of your, your, your home state. You know, you could outsource. Outsource is the act of finding someone outside of your office or your, your area and having someone do it who's you know, not located with you. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting because us at our company, we provide a lot of different services. Um, mm. And how I started doing this was I, I was just hiring a team to support my own business. You know, I, I just was looking to, to get a team, a remote team to do stuff for me. And I started telling friends about it and they would ask me if they could utilize my team. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, and helping folks do it. And even to this day, um, someone will, will come to us and they'll say, okay, well, I'm looking for data entry or I'm looking for someone to create some lists for us to go in and search things and make an Excel spreadsheet or maybe email them something or give them a phone call, you know, whatever it is. And I say, okay, no problem. And then I always ask them, you know, tell me more about your business or what else are you doing? What else are you doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then they start telling me about it. And then, and then they'll say, well, I really want to do this and that. Uh, but I just don't know how to get it done. And I'm like, oh, well, we provide that service also. So, you know, on our website, supremeoutsourcing.com, we, we have a whole list of services and, and people are usually pretty surprised to see the kinds of services that we offer, you know, anything mm -hmm. from web development to graphic design, to social media marketing, to, you know, data entry, data research, surveys, inbound, outbound phone calls, customer service, um, you know, uh, live chat online, all these different things. It's really uh, finding someone who's capable to do the job that you need to get done and, um, you know, making sure the job is done. And, and that's kind of, you know, what we're here for is, and again, for our company specifically, we have certain limitations. Um, there's, we do a lot of, we build a lot of websites for clients. Um, but there's a lot of kinds of programming that we don't do. You know, we don't do mobile apps. Um, so if somebody comes to app, uh, you know, look for a mobile app. No, no, we, we don't do that. You know, there's other companies out there that do it, but I'm clear on like where our skill set lies mm -hmm. uh, and where it doesn't. But mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, what I see in the future, I mean, it, it's a, it's a global ball game at this point. You know, the world is, is a lot smaller than it used to be. Like right now, you and I are very several thousand miles from each other, but here we are looking at each other uh, in like real time. You and I could sit here, you know, putting deals together or the point, yeah. sheets or, you know, we, we, we could do business as we are right now. Um, and I would just, all of us, you know, regardless of your business, if you're watching, I would just start thinking about, um, you know, what areas of my business can I, can I maximize? You know, it's not always about maximizing profits, though, as a CFO, I'm, I'm sure that's a, it's a pretty important one. Um, so if it is about a cost savings, there are cost savings out there. If it is about finding, um, like, like for me, you know, 10, 12 years ago, how, 12 years ago, um, when I couldn't find the, the right people for the, for the last other company that I was managing, I just needed someone to help me. I, please, I just need someone to fulfill these roles. Um, and yeah. I found someone that helped me fulfill these roles. So, um, you know, it's a global ball game at, at this point. The playing field is around the world. You may as well maximize your opportunities, take advantage of them. Um, you don't have to, you know, they might make or break you. You know, I, I always think back to, uh, was it uh, Robert Kiyosaki and the cash flow quadrant? You know, I think it's called, he, he talks yeah. about, we, we all started, you know, as a job doing our technical skill. And then we become good at our technical skill and we say, Hey, I can, don't have to work for this company. I can do it for myself. Mm -hmm. Now we're doing it for 12 hours a day, that technical skill, but we're self-employed now. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, Hey, wait a minute, you know, I can, just go bring on more clients and find people like me, have them do the job. And then I, I actually manage the business. 
and then you bring on people, um, you know, that's, that's what we're, we're for. We're for those people, uh, or outsourcing is for those people that, you know, I, I, I guess uh, they're looking to take their business to the next level. They, they may have a couple of employees. They may have a couple of remote employees. You know, I always mm-hmm. find, quite frankly, my best clients are ones that have already outsourced in the past. They've already had employees before. They've mm-hmm. already managed a team before because they know what they're doing. Uh, I'm, yeah. usually, I'm usually a little hesitant even like I say no to clients. I'm, I'm very clear. Yes, we can help you or no, we can't. Uh, I will typically like someone that has had these experiences before because, you know, a, a solopreneur or something like this, starting their first business, you know, coming to us, uh, a lot of times it will end in failure, not for any fault on ours, just because they didn't know how to delegate properly. They didn't know how to yep. work properly. They didn't know how to yep patients properly so you know a good client for us is you know they've been in business for several years they've had f- at least a few employees if not a few virtual assistants in the past uh you know hopefully they're doing a couple hundred thousand dollars up to a couple million bucks um and that's the niche that we serve um you know we're not really going after the large companies there are other larger companies than mine that provide, uh, you know, outsourced services and they can scale and hire, you know, a hundred people at once. That, that's not mine, you know, for the person that's looking for a few extra virtual assistants to do some jobs that they need to get done. That, that's kind of where mm-hmm. we fall into. So um, I see it, you know, as a, as a global playing field in the world today. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. not only in work, it's, it's happening in a lot of different areas. So if you're a business owner, um, I believe it's something to, to look at, you know, even if you don't outsource to, to my company or to the Philippines or even overseas to the U.S., uh, if you have a business, you know, you can outsource uh, or find a remote worker somewhere in the United States or somewhere in your state that yeah. you, know, you don't talk to every single day in your office. Yeah, and I think, you know, what's interesting is I, I know that I... I wasn't necessarily cost driven in coming to you for help. It was more of, Hey, I have this need. If you can fill it, great. (laughs) You know, like I need that filled first because, you know, it is, uh, you know, as you're building the value of a business is as you're growing, it's like, look, I, I want to look at cost at the same time, my opportunity cost and my valuation makes this look like peanuts. Right. So I just need somebody that can get the job done to get where we need to go. Now the cost savings on it, is gravy um and i think it's actually kind of makes in one way it makes me feel a little better that it's not like like dirt cheap like it used to be because it's almost like your expectations are lower and you kind of almost don't feel right about it i maybe that's just me but um they're almost like you're taking advantage or something um but i think that you know if you uh that that service component of it and it's not just cost driven that's a whole different market, right? And it's like, hey, look, it's this is yeah, cost is great, but what we're talking about is you're gonna get better service and people are gonna notice it internally, your customers are gonna notice it, your employees are gonna notice it. And you know, I guess I'm wondering like how long is it gonna take for once that catches on more, what's gonna happen to the cost? I mean, is that gonna be something where you see wages go up because it's worth it or is it like no 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 that's actually it's so international it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like it's all inside the u.s right i was always curious as to what and maybe you don't know i'm just i was just curious as to how long how long will it take for that equilibrium to kind of you know meet and then there's going to be like labor shortages in countries and they'll have to put tariffs on it or something you know i don't know i'm not sure what what is your outlook on that do you have any yeah, I mean, anything I'll say right now is just my opinion, but what I've yeah, seen yeah. is that it becomes a competitive marketplace, and the marketplace is the worldwide market. Yeah. If yeah. I'm a, you know, a video editor or a web designer or a graphic designer or something of this nature, uh, I know that I've got to find my, you know, competitive niche or you know what separates me from from everybody else. Um, You know, if I'm in the US and I know that this is happening, um, I either need to start a business and and you'd be surprised. I mean, even these, you know, multi-billion dollar companies that are providing these kinds of services, uh, you'll never kind of know about it as it trickles down, but you know, they hire people from a, on a a global marketplace. 
Um, but it, it tells me that me as a worker, I need to up my game. I need to up my performance. I need to up my results. I need, to, I need to learn better. I need to become better at what I do and uh, show and, you know, tell uh, people, you know, how I'm different. Um, and at the same time, even people in these other countries where people are outsourcing to more and more people are doing it. Like you said, your, your kids are under the age of 10 and you know, they're, they're all on the computer. Uh, what's going to prevent your, your eight-year-old from getting a job doing data entry, you know? Um, so, you know, all of us, yeah. and that, that's why I kind of look at things globally here is, you know, we, we've all of us, all business owners, you know, uh, service providers, uh, the end worker, um, you know, the, the days of the 40 years and get a pension are, are, are no longer around. So, oh, yeah. And things change very, 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 very quickly, very quickly. I think they change quicker now than, than ever before because of the opportunities that are out there. Um, so, you know, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen. But what I know is now we have so much more access to higher quality work than ever before. So when I was living in Miami, Florida, and I was hiring people locally that were working for me, you know, I, I had to deal with this small little geographic area. Um, but now I can hire people who have the exact skill set that I'm looking for um, because I have a, a, a larger pool to, to choose from. So, you know, regardless of where we're at, you know, uh, whether you're the worker, you're the manager, you're the owner, um, I, I'd say that... Uh, you know, resting on your laurels is, is never a good idea. Oh, yeah. and upping our game and uh, showing people how we can provide more value um, is always a good idea. Um, and, you know, relationships are always important. Relationships with clients, relationships with your network, relationships with friends, because you never know where your next client's going to come from, your next job's going to come from, your next deal's going to come from. Um, and, you know, I guess always doing the right thing. Um, I... Uh, I grew up working for my father's little pharmacy since I was like five years old to 16, 17, 18. Every day after school, I hated the job, <laughs> but, but it, it taught me the value of taking care of uh, the customer. You know, every mm -hmm. single day after school, my father would teach me these lessons and, you know, I would have to be there doing whatever needed to be done, uh, you know, take care of the business to take care of the the, the, the customers and you know that that's stuck with me and uh, I just think always doing the right thing and always doing right by people uh, there's a lot of value in that and uh, oh, yeah. it goes a long way. 